Hello and welcome to session nine, where we will discuss estimation and confidence interval. You know, we often take samples so as to be able to say something about the population. So we invariably end up estimating something about the population. Sometimes you want a precise estimate or just to end in estimate a range because we know certain things might not happen with some kind of certainty. So that's what we do. So we will do statistical estimation and talk about point estimation, interval estimation, which leads us to the construction of confidence intervals. So we, we construct the interval estimates and attach a certain degree of confidence to our results. So at the end of this session, you should be able to estimate confidence intervals for the population mean, population proportion, the, um, the, for the confidence interval for the difference between two population means, um, the difference between two population proportions. You would also talk about the sample size that you would require to um, 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 estimate a predetermined confidence interval. And finally, would introduce you to confidence intervals using the student's T distribution, where the sample size is very small. So this is the outline of the presentation as I indicated earlier. Let's begin with point and interval estimates. Okay, so I, I, I said earlier that estimation is the process of using sample data to draw inferences about the population. So when you, you take a sample, you can compute certain statistics like the mean or the variance to say whether this mean that you've found from the uh, sample is comparable to what is in the population. Now, so this statistic that is used to estimate the population par parameter is called an estimator. And the a numerical value of the estimator is called an estimate. But there are two types of estimates. We have what we call the point estimate and the interval estimate. The point estimate talks about a single value. So you estimate. For example, you want to um, estimate that the temperature tomorrow will be 23 three degrees as opposed to an interval estimate where you say that the temperature is be, will be tomorrow will be between 21 and 25 degrees so with the interval estimate you attach some degree of uncertainty to your estimate and we're saying that any uh, estimator should have some good qualities we're saying that an estimator should be unbiased. That is, it must be correct on average. So as we saw, the sample mean and the sample proportion are unbiased estimates because we know the average or the expected values are equal to the population parameter, right? The expected value of, the, um, of x bar you saw was equal to mu. So the sample mean and the sample proportion are, unbi are unbiased um, estimators. And then we want the estimate to also be precise, meaning that it should have small variances, okay? So these are um, um, the introductory aspects. And we're saying that for point estimation, it's just a single value, and the interval gives us a range. Now let's talk about confidence intervals for the population mean. Now to obtain the point estimate, we say you should use sample um, mean, right? So if you want to estimate the population mean, you just estimate the sample mean. And because we said it is unbiased. But if you want this interval estimate for the sample mean, it must be equal to the, sample, the point estimate of the sample mean plus something, plus or minus something. Now the question is, what is that plus or minus? Okay. Now you know that the distribution of the sample mean is normal with a mean of mu and variance of sigma squared over n. So, since we know the sample mean is normally distributed, we can calculate probabilities for it. So, when we talk about the 95 probability interval, it simply says that we want the probability that the sample mean lies within 1.96 standard errors of the mean. Then this is what you, 
you say. Because we are saying that we want the sample mean to lie within a range. And the range must be first take the mean, mu, subtract from me 1.96 times the standard error. And also add to the mu 1.96 times the standard error. And we are saying that the probability that the sample mean lies within 1.96 standard errors of the population mean will be equal to 0.95. Does it make sense to you? Recall that we said earlier that if a variable is normally distributed, it's always true that 95.4% will lie within two standard deviations of the mean, right? But here, it is not two standard deviations. It is 1.96. So 1.96 is close to two, right? So if it were two standard deviations, if x bar were lying within two standard deviations of the mean, this answer would have been 0.954. But because if we are talking about 1.96, which is slightly smaller than 2, then we would expect it to be the value here to be smaller, right? So since it's normally distributed, we expect the sample mean to lie within 1. Point, uh, the probability that the sample mean lies within 1.96 standard errors of the population mean the answer should be 0.95 now we can rearrange what we have here rearrange the left hand side when we rearrange it we can get this this expression so the left hand side not looking at the right hand side just that when we rearrange it we can obtain this expression which says that the mu the population mean actually lies within 1.96 standard errors of the sample mean. Now, this formula is the formula for the confidence interval for the population mean. It is the formula because we are estimating the population mean for in an interval. We're saying that the population mean will lie in this interval. Now, you saw earlier that we got 0.95 here, which is the same as the 95%. So the 95% we saw, when we express it in 100, it is 0.95, and it is called the confidence coefficient. The 95% confidence interval means that about 95% of similarly constructed intervals will contain the parameter being estimated. In other words, we are saying that we want to estimate the population mean and we are using this formula and the formula is saying that we are estimating the population mean to lie within the range um, one uh, to lie with the range plus or minus 1.96 standard errors of the sample mean what this means is that if we took constructed hundred of these intervals we will capture the true population mean within this range in 95 out of the 100 cases. That's what it means. So it, the 95% confidence means that about 95% of, of similarly constructed intervals will capture the true population mean that we want to estimate. Now, we don't only do 95. You can also construct what we call 90% and 99% confidence interval. So in general, this is the formula. So if when you are not restricted, this is the formula. So it says x bar minus z times sigma over root of over square root of n less than or equal to mu less than or equal to x bar plus z times sigma over square root of n. Now so depending on whether it is 90, 95, or 99 percent, you would get the corresponding z. Because you see, when we were talking about 95 percent, the value of the z actually was 9.6. Sorry, 1.96. So for 95 percent, the z is 1.96. That's why we had the 9.6 system. But we're saying that in general, the z is the value of the standard normal variable that is exceeded with the probability of alpha divided by 2. Now, where, what is our alpha? Our alpha 
is equal to 1 minus the confidence coefficient. So, in this case, for the 95% confidence interval, our co confidence coefficient is 0 0.95. Therefore, our alpha will be 1 minus 0 0.95, and alpha is equal to 0 .0, 0 0.05. And alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025. Now, we are, we, are, we are saying that the z is the value of the standard normal variable that is exceeded with a probability of alpha over 2. Now, alpha over 2 is 0 0.025, meaning that we want the z value such that the area under the normal curve to the right of the z is 0 0.025. And that value is 1.96. 1.96. Okay? So that's what we obtained. So you read from the table, right? And get that. Now, let's take an example. So let's say that we are given a sample mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 10. And then the sample size is 100. And we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Using our formula, mu is equal to x bar plus or minus z times sigma over root n. This is equal to 20 plus or minus 1.96 times 10 over square root of 100, right? And it gives us 18.04 and 21.96. So we expect that the population mean will lie uh, between 18.04 and 21.96 with 95% confidence. That's what it means. Now, as I indicated, we can also construct 90% confidence interval. And for the 90% confidence interval, the corresponding um, z, the z value corresponding to an area under the normal curve um, of alpha over 2, and in this case, alpha over 2 is 0 0.05, will be 1.64, or you can also use 1.65. For 99%, the z in the formula is equal to 2.57 or 2.58. When the uh, population standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is large, we can use the sample standard deviation in its place. So to sum up, this is the formula. Uh, these are the formulas you use. For the 90% confidence interval, it is this. The 95% confidence interval, you use this formula. And finally, the 99% confidence interval, um, you use this one. We can also construct confidence intervals for the um, population proportion. So we discussed population proportions. And it is the same principles. Um, and then you apply the formula, the population proportion pi should be equal to the sample proportion P plus or minus Z alpha over 2. So it tells you the standard normal variable that is exceeded with a probability of alpha over 2. And of course, you determine your alpha over 2 based on whether you are computing 90%, 95%, or 99% confidence interval. And then as usual, square root of P times 1 minus P over N is the standard error. So, take this example. Of a sample of 200 men, 15 are unemployed. Find the 95% confidence interval for the true population, sorry, for the true proportion of unemployed men. So, from the sample data, we know that 15 out of 200 are unemployed. So, our sample proportion is 7.5% or 0 0.075. And our sample size is 200. So for a 95% confidence interval, we have this. Pi is equal to P plus or minus 1.96 times square root of P, 1 minus P divided by N. So this is it. You slot in the values because they are all there. And it gives you 0 0.038 to 0 0.112. In other words, the true percentage of unemployed men um, is between 3.8 and 11.2%, okay, with 95% confidence. 
Now we can also construct confidence intervals for the difference between two population means, right? Okay, so again, the principles are the same. This is the formula. So there are two population means, mu1, mu2. We want to find the 95 or the confidence interval for the difference between these two means. You apply this formula. Is the difference between the sample means, the respective sample means, plus or minus z alpha over 2 divided by the square root of this, right? Where x bar 1 is this um, sample mean for the first population, x bar 2 is the sample mean for the second population, s1 squared and s2 squared are the sample variances for the two populations respectively. And then N1 and N2 are the sample sizes from the two populations respectively. Okay, so all you need to know is to apply the appropriate formula. Now, this is an example. Now, as a survey of holiday makers found that on average, women spend three hours per day sun bathing, men spend two hours. The sample sizes were 36 in each case, and the standard deviations were 1.2. 1 hours and 1.2 hours, respectively. So we want to construct a 95% confidence interval. It's all a matter of applying the formula and substituting appropriately. So if we assume that um, women are the first population, then X bar 1 represents women and X bar 2 represents men. The hours for women is 3 and for men is 2. So it is X bar 1 minus X bar 2 should be 3 minus 2, right? And then since it's a 95% confidence interval, our Z should be 1.96. And then you substitute the sample variances and then the sample size, you get 0.5 to 1.5. It means that on our women spend between 30 minutes to one and a half hours more than um, uh, men. Okay, so basically that's it. Now, we can also do that for the difference between two proportions. Okay, so again, you, you use this formula. So P1 and P2 are the sample proportions from the two populations. So P1 for the first population, P2 second population, and then N1 and N2 are the sample sizes from the two populations. You apply this and then... Um, you get the estimate and the interpretation is the same as we previously looked at. Now we can also, sometimes you have a given confidence interval and you want to determine the sample size that you require to estimate that interval. So we can do that by applying this formula. Okay, so if the length of the confidence interval is predetermined, we can estimate the sample size required to estimate such an interval using this formula. So the sample size n is equal to z times um, sigma divided by e, all squared, where the e is the new variable being in, as introduced, and it is the plus or minus the error allowed in the interval, right? The plus or minus error allowed. So let's say an example is, so assume the assets of the 120 rural banks in the country are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 90 million cities. What sample size is needed to determine the mean assets to within plus or minus 20 million cities with 95% confidence? Now, because we're talking about the 95% confidence interval, it means your Z must be 1.96 as we previously found we know our standard deviation is 90, and we want to estimate within plus or minus 20 million. So our E is 20. So when you substitute these into the formula, you get 77.8, approximately 78. So you need a sample size of um, 78 to be able to estimate the mean assets of the 120 rural banks to within plus or minus 20 uh, million cities with um, 95 percent confidence now when you comes to the proportion the same similar formula is applied right now let's end our uh, discussion of confidence intervals by talking about 
uh, in confidence intervals for small samples, we will introduce the student's T distribution. Now, the student's T distribution is um, a member of a uh, family of continuous probability distributions that arises when uh, estimating the mean of a normally distribution population in situations where the sample size is small and the population standard deviation is unknown. So you apply the T when the sample size is small and the population standard uh, deviation is unknown. And the T distribution has properties similar to the um, normal distribution, right? And that's it. So you want to compare the two distributions. So this is the normal distribution. This is the uh, T distribution. And so corresponding to the T distribution is a table where you can read the probability values just as we did with the standard normal distribution. So if you have a sample size that is small, typically less than 25, and a true variance or standard deviation is unknown, then you can find the confidence interval using the T distribution and applying this formula. So as usual, it is X bar plus or minus T with N minus one degrees of freedom multiplied by the standard error, right? So we're saying that our T, N minus one, is the standard T variable that is exceeded with a probability of alpha over two. And then our alpha, as usual, is equal to one minus the confidence coefficient. Now, N minus one is a degree of freedom, where N is the sample size. So to take an example, let's say that a sample of 20 University of Ghana students finds, sorry, uh, finds an average expenditure on internet data bundle per week of 12 cities with a standard deviation of eight cities. Find the 95% confidence interval estimate of the true level of expenditure of students. So from the question, we know the sample mean is 12, the standard deviation is eight, and then the sample size is 20. So we can apply the T distribution and we have to find the T for alpha over two with 19 degrees of freedom, right? So we read from the table. Now it, it gives us a value of 2.0993. Um, now how do we do that? This is a table, it's not so clear here, but since um, we, we, you have the extreme left column gives you the degrees of freedom. So you have to locate your 19 degrees of freedom somewhere here. And then we're doing this for um, the confidence interval here, but it is 95, so you look for your 95, and then the intersection of the 95, and then 19 degrees of freedom gives you the appropriate value. Okay, so you can read that. So when we slot in the values, we, we have 12 plus or minus, 2.098 multiplied by 8 over square root of 20 and it gives us the range the interval 8.3 to 15.7 so on average we're saying that students spend 8.3 to 15.7 cities on internet data bundle per week with 95 percent confidence Okay, so this is where we bring our discussion of confidence interval to an end. Um, our last topic for this course is hypothesis testing. I, I will be with you shortly. Thank you.